Hello friends and welcome on this beautiful day in the Skyhoy studio where we'll look at a new brand in our portfolio which is Data Video. So I've known about Data Video cameras for quite a long time and finally I managed to get a PDC 150 and 140 camera in the Skahoy offices so we could do integration with these cameras. They are controlled by Visca, so we can use much of the framework you already know from our PDC controllers. But of course, as we always do with our integrations, we uh, go deep, we look at the actual parameters these cameras support and make sure that the, the value ranges and the features that you find in our controllers match what is in these cameras so yet that you have a, a really tight integration with them. So the PDC-150, this camera, is actually not an IP-based camera. It is a serial camera, so you'll see that we are controlling it over serial, but since our controllers are IP, we have simply put a converter in between. We'll get back to that, while the PDC-140 camera is a native IP-enabled camera. So the first one we'll be looking at is the PDC-150 right here. And if we look at the, the whole setup from above, as I mentioned, we have a serial converter in the mix, and this is the one. So it's a little inexpensive device that is connected to my network with this Ethernet cable, and the green cable you see goes from the RS-422 connection here to the... Um, connection or uh, RS-422 connection on the back side of the camera and of course we need to set up the correct bow rate and uh, the bits and all those things uh, also the yeah so there are some some configurations to do that's in the manual so you'll uh, not be in trouble there now one of the cool things about using a serial converter with um, IP to serial converter with these cameras is that you can put it really close to the camera and then you can connect it to your house network it means no hassle running long serial cables through your facility, simply use your existing network to operate the camera. Now, um, the PDC Fly is the controller of choice today, so you'll see um, how this is able to um, work with the camera, and uh, now I'm using the joystick to do a pan, and I can also do tilt, and I can do zoom, and in fact, I am pretty happy with the smoothness of the movement we are experiencing with this camera. So as you can see, and then I bring it to a slow stop, that's actually pretty neat. And maybe let's let's look at whether we can connect this to PDC Trace later in the video. But um, first, let's take a look at the features that we implemented for the PDC 150. We have exposure mode, and there's in fact only two modes on this camera. So either it's in auto mode, as it is right now, or we can turn it over to manual mode, like you see right, right here. And now we have Iris F2, so I can change this, so you can see I'm changing the exposure of the camera. You could also map that to a fader on an RCP or Colorfly if you want to do shading of this camera. Now in this case, of course, we mapped it out onto a encoder knob like we find them on the PTC Fly. So that's exposure mode. Let's go and look at focus mode. Focus is next to, and I can go from manual to auto. And when I'm now in manual mode, you'll see that I'm able to pull focus on my target here. So as I'm turning this knob, you'll see that I'm able to defocus and now refocus the image. The way the PDC flies is designed is that we chose to make the button on the far right a multifunctional button. If you press the lower edge, you're changing between selecting camera and if you had multiple of these cameras on the bus, you would see camera two, three, four, and five pop up. But if I press the lower edge here, you'll see that I'm turning it into a preset selection. So the preset or the framing that we have right now, let's store that as a preset. So I press and hold the key until it turns green. And now the preset is stored. And then let us just move the camera a little bit over to the side right there. Okay. And let's store this in preset number two. All right. So now that turned green. If I short press the first one, you'll see the camera moves over to the first preset position. And I short press the other one, it goes back to the second preset. So that's preset store and recall for you on a Skyhawk controller. And by the way, you can go to banks six to 10 and 11 to 15 if you want by pressing the sides of this multifunctional button. We call them four way buttons because they are like a little binary joystick that can detect the edge presses of left, right, top, and down and you can assign actions to those individual edge presses if you want. So that's what we did on this key, although the other keys, the other uh, five keys on the controller is currently programmed to just be ordinary buttons. So you can do both. Now, uh, let's pre press the upper edge of the key here. 
that will toggle us through menu. And in this case, we have three levels. And uh, on the second level, I have white balance mode. So there I can go between manual and auto. And now I'm in manual mode. I'm able to paint the picture. And if you noticed, we actually have um, quite a bluish uh, tint to the picture. And of, of course, I can correct that by turning the knob here. Um, and um, I think we should be able to uh, do something about the, the painting of the picture. It seems like I need to exercise this quite a lot. So I could keep doing this until I hit the, the right color of the, uh, of the image. Uh, I might want to go back and uh, turn up the exposure a little bit here. And uh, then I go back and I can work with the red and the blue gain. Now, uh, let me show you a feature that you'll often find on our controllers. That is when you have an encoder knob, you can press and hold it. And then it will reset the values to some kind of default. In this case, I picked the default that the camera would choose, which is exactly in the middle between 0 and 255, which are the value ranges for red and blue gain. And this is not too far off, but if I wanted to take a little bit more of the blue out of the picture, I can do that, of course, by turning the blue knob right there. Okay, let's move on. I also have one push white balance trigger. So if you want to do that, uh, just change over to one push mode. I can turn the knob here and now it auto corrected the image. And finally, we have also presets like indoor white balance, outdoor white balance, lamp, and those are associated with fi fixed Kelvin uh, values like um, 3200 for indoor and I think 5600 for outdoor lamp. I think that was 2500 Kelvin. Uh, it's actually set in the menu of the camera. So if you want to confirm these things, you could always use the remote control of the camera. And then uh, if we do that, you will be able to see, if I go to camera here, if you go to white balance, you can see white balance is currently set to uh, 2500. Now, notice again, this is a point about how Skahoy does stuff. And um, the values you see on the control on the PC fly is actually reflecting what is in the camera. So we are talking to the camera forth and back. We are pulling data out of the camera. And now notice what happens when I um, select the, the white balance of the camera and I change it into the outdoor mode. Notice how it updates on the PPC fly. And that's true for any parameter that you can set in this camera. That is that if, if you, um, the, the value that you see in the display is actually pulled out of the camera. So you have confidence that what you see in the display is actually the setting you have, like iris values and so forth. If we move on, we can also set the pan tilt zoom speed and um, I can turn on and off the power of the camera or I can bring up the on-screen menu. Now I left it on and I dropped my remote control on the floor. So I'm in luck that I can now turn the knob and turn off the on-screen display if I want. Or I could go the opposite way like you see here and turn it on again and then I can navigate with the joystick. Before we move on to look at the PDC 140 camera over here, let's take a look at how we can implement PDC trace on the PDC 150 with the uh, PDC Fly controller, okay? And um, PDC Trace is that you can record your moves. So in addition to recalling a preset, you're now able to record movements that you record with a joystick. And that's what I'll show you. So we'll bring up the local configuration interface of the PDC Fly that's facilitated by the Skyhawk firmware application over here, having this USB cable connected between my computer and the PTC Fly. So um, having that set up, I can press the local configuration button. It brings up the web interface of the controller. And I now want to go to buttons number four and five and turn those into preset uh, uh, PTC trace recall and record buttons. Okay, so if I go down here, you can see in the normal case, this is a camera selector that will select camera number four, but I'm now going to change that action into a PDC trace action. I'm going to do that for camera number one. I will do a combined play record action on this one. So it means that when I press and hold, it will start record. When I just single press, it will play back. I want to use uh, trace memory number one. And then I can choose to use a preset to recall as the first thing when I, I do this, which I want to do. I, I'll select preset number five. And then I can choose play from um, recording start, meaning that uh, it will respect the time that uh, comes be from, from my start recording and then until I move the joystick. Then uh, I also want to change the color. So I'll choose purple as my color. And then I want to insert it on button number five. In that case, I change to preset memory number two and preset number six. So I'll save this and you'll see on my controller immediately the button changes over. So um, now I want to position my 
my camera where I want to start my, my trace. Let's say this is at the left edge of the stage. Um, so let's just frame this uh, nicely so we can see this is where we come from. I press and record and now you'll see on the button it says that we are starting using the trace. We have 60 seconds left for what we want to do and now I want to slowly start moving the camera across the stage which is nice. I want to do a slow zoom so I turn the joystick a little bit and then just go up here. Oh, not too fast, not too fast. And I slow down a little bit and then I bring it to stop. Okay, stop. And then I, I want to move down just slowly a little bit and then I zoom out and bring it to a stop. So this is my trace. Okay, and I press stop to stop recording. I could do the same for the second button. But notice what happens when I press the button to replay this trace. It's going to start recalling the preset position we, we started out at. And notice what happens now then. Hands free, it's going to move the camera with the pan that I did just before. So it's replaying all the speed actions that I just recorded. That is how PDC Trace works. So while it's doing this, I think we should um, soon be ready to, uh, to look at how the PDC uh, 140 camera works. It's, um, well actually it's, maybe you should just be allowed to see this complete, yeah? So it has uh, three seconds left and there we go. That was replay of the trace. So this feature is available for all VSCAC implementations that you know from Skahoy. It's found on the PDC Fly all the way up to the PDC Extreme controller. So any Skahoy controller will do PDC Trace for you. Now, let's change this into a controller for the PDC 150. So we will go back to the firmware application and then now we'll press online configuration. Um, when I go to online configuration, you see all the wonderful implementations we already did. So we have tons of default configurations, regardless of which PDC camera you have. You just pick the configuration already made for that camera and you are started very quickly. So uh, in the bottom of this list, I just added another default configuration, which is for the 140 camera. Now, uh, that's the reason why I'm in expert mode. And that is because this development was finished just yesterday. So it's so brand new and hot that at this time of recording, I need to pull it from a branch in the Skahoy servers. And I press branch, I type in a branch name, and now I'm generating a firmware based on that branch. Now, while that's happening, because it takes a little time, I'll explain what that means. This is if, um, if you want to use the latest and greatest software from Skahoy, you can use either updating a firmware from master or from a branch. You only want to use branch if you know what you're doing. This is if you are in direct touch with Skahoy about some development that can be a, a feature addition or a bug fix or something like that. And you get instructions that you should compile a particular branch from our Git repository. Then you type in the branch name right there. But if you just know that you need to have the latest firmware, which is not released yet, you can just uh, generate it from the master um, of our Git repository. So this is for the adventurers of you. Today, as I'm sitting right here, I need to do it because this development is not released yet. It will be by the time this video is out, I'm pretty sure, so you shouldn't have to do this. So uh, the controller is now rebooting and you, you actually saw a few error messages here. This is just indication that the controller has a new software inside, which means that we need to clear the internal memory out of old information that we used for the PDC 150 camera. But everything looks nice. You see uh, it is actually connected to the camera. You can see the IP address that we connect to with the 140 over there. It is the 140. PDC 140 device core. It is um, um, it is receiving block commands from the camera, and finally it's connected. So everything should be good. And uh, let's go and explore the camera. So um, first of all, on the PDC Fly, we need to enable the camera by the camera selector. And then, as on the PDC 150, we have menus to to toggle through using the upper edge of the menu button here. So you see, kind of the same thing: exposure mode. In this case, uh, with the exposure mode, we have iris and shutter speed over here. And then if I'm changing this, you can see access to gain limit over here. 
Now, if I go to the next menu, we have white balance and I can go to, uh, let's say, auto mode or, or manual mode where we have red and blue gain, exactly like on the PTC 150. And then here we have additional things that are, is not on this camera, but is on the 140 model, which is brightness, contrast, hue and sharpness put onto these buttons. In this case, again, I can press and hold the keys and it will reset to the default values of the camera. If I move on, then we have focus mode set to manual currently. I can set it to auto and then we have the on-screen uh, display. So we can also bring up the menu. If I, uh, if I turn that, you can see the menu is right here. And again, I can navigate with the joystick and go in and out of levels using this one. But now I'm going out again from the menu. So it's, it's very much like you see from, from, for the 150 camera, but there is actually an additional level of features because this, um, the 140 model has far many more features that we can uh, cram into the controller if we want. And uh, that's basically what is uh, the, the, the reason why we have four levels on that one and only three for that. Now, in the exposure mode, we also have access to shutter speed in this case. So there you see the shutter speed is, um, is possible to set to some other value than uh, 350. Now in this case, 120. I can also adjust the iris a little bit, so we can do that. Let's go to the white balance mode and see if we can fix the... Um, uh, sorry, um, just keep it in manual. We go to white balance mode and then we can uh, take a little bit of the red out of the picture. So we paint it a little more neutral, neutral color right there. That's great. And uh, we don't need to deal with those. You have understood the concept of the menu, I'm pretty sure. Again, pressing the lower edge of the button gives you access to presets over here. We can store a preset. And of course, since it is a PTC camera, we could also operate the joystick to get close to something and store another preset in bank number two. Now I can recall the first one and I can recall the second one using these keys. That's all very nice. With the PTC 150 camera, let's take a look at the action list that is available for you to map onto the encoder buttons. And pressing the local configuration button in the firmware updater will bring you right into the web interface of the controller. And here we can uh, hold down shift key to select multiple encoders if you want. And then we can scroll down and look at the actions assigned to those. So here you find exposure mode as one example and iris as uh, on, on knob number B, shutter speed. That's exactly what we saw on the controller on these uh, keys here. You see gain limit out here is also on, on the uh, last encoder, uh, number D, right here, there you have gain limit. And likewise for white balance, for contrast, brightness, hue, saturation, sharpness and so forth. But what I want to show you is that we have a long list of features you can map for the PTC 140 camera onto these knobs. You can have anything from pan tilt and zoom, which of course is the actions mapped to the joystick. You can um, then choose iris shutter speed as you just saw, but there's stuff like exposure compensation, enable and level. You have flicker cancel, there's um, um, the, the white balance sensitivity, auto white balance sensitivity, the hue brightness saturation uh, things. No, I don't think we put saturation in, but you could add that if you want. Dynamic hot pixel fix, you have noise reduction, 2D and 3D, gamma picture effect, and then you have even image flip and the system values like you, you can turn on and off the power of the camera, which I think was actually in the last menu here. No, it was not. That was only on the PTC 150. So all those actions are also available to you, but notice how we made a controller with a configuration that gives you only access to the things you need. And if you want to change the defaults over to things that you need instead of the default configurations, you're free to do so. And that's how Skahoy roll when we do PTC camera integrations. We take a look at the actual features in the cameras and implement them in the controller so that you have a native control experience with the Skahoy Universal Generic PTC controller. Mm -hmm.